Good morning this Tuesday, guys. Hey, we're still on the very back of the book. Again, we're, the subject is social studies. We use our community's book for that. Um, I also added a couple pages. We've been in R6 and R7, and the main thing we're talking about is what does it mean to be landlocked. But I also, we're going to look at page R8 and R9 a little bit. And if you remember correctly, my fine folks, this is the main thing we talked about yesterday. This is the state of Kansas. Just like Arizona, we can't say, hey, in Kansas, let's go to the ocean. There, There is no ocean in Kansas. They're landlocked. No matter which way you go out of Kansas, there's land. They're locked in by land. That's a severe disadvantage that Kansas has because they can't just put their stuff on a boat and ship it to anywhere in the world. They can only do it through plane or through through truck, which costs a lot more money. Now, uh, here's what we're going to focus on today. I know it's a long question here, sorry. How do some states still do a lot of shipping even though they are not on a large body of water? And by a large body of water, I mean the ocean. Here is the good old United States of America, right? We talked about how these states have a huge advantage, and these states have a huge advantage, and why there's huge shipping port cities. Port cities means they're right in the ocean, like Houston, Miami, New Orleans, uh, New York, uh, Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, Los Angeles. Huge cities that do a lot of shipping, uh, which helps you bring in a lot of money to, to those areas. And we talked about poor Arizona who's landlocked and poor Kansas who's landlocked. But again, I kind of gave you a little spoiler alert yesterday. Wait a second, what's all these squiggly lines in here? And, and these lakes, aren't those good for shipping? And if you look actually at pages R8 and R9, we have a lot of pretty major rivers in our country. And most, not all, most are really, really good for shipping. And if you looked, all these states that you colored for your assignment yesterday as landlocked actually aren't as landlocked as we thought because, remember these squiggly lines? A lot of these squiggly lines that we see in this here are actually rivers. Now, these aren't. See, these are just nice straight lines. <laughs> but the squiggly lines, most of the time, that means that border is a river. And if you look at page R8 and R9, you can see a lot of our country's rivers. It's also on page R6 and R7, but in my opinion, it's a little harder to see the rivers there. Um, and so you're right. Uh, sorry to keep going back and forth, but look at, look at a state like Iowa or, or Illinois. And I grew up in Illinois, right here on the Mississippi River. Man, we would go down the river sometimes, and there is barge after barge after barge full of stuff that are shipping everywhere. A barge is a big, huge boat that's just meant for carrying stuff. Most of the time, it would be corn and wheat from these states. But here's where I grew up in Moline, Illinois, and they look like they're landlocked. But actually... They can follow the Mississippi River here, and they can go all the way down here to Louisiana and out to the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean. And literally, right here in Moline, Illinois, where I grew up, we were shipping to China, we were shipping to Brazil, we were shipping things to, to England and Europe, all over the world, because they could ship it right here on this river and get out to the ocean. So Illinois is not as landlocked as you think. And that's why, my fine folks, on these rivers, there are some pretty major cities. If you go back again, I know Moline, Illinois might not be considered a major river, but another thing they did here is they used these that are called the Great Lakes. These are huge bodies of fresh water that are all lakes. And here's the deal. Is so close to the Mississippi River, and there's actually another little river here called the Illinois River that stops right about here. So what they did is they built a canal, and a canal is very literally a man-made river. They dug and dug and dug to connect Lake Michigan 
to the Illinois River, which connects to the Mississippi River, which connects to the Gulf of Mexico, which connects to the Atlantic Ocean. And so Moline, Illinois, we could actually ship up to Chicago, and then they could go through all these great lakes right here and say, oh no, we're stopped. But you see this little squiggly line? This is called the Hudson River in New York, and they actually built what's called the Erie Canal. This is a big canal, but they connected Lake Erie here to the Hudson River through the Erie Canal. And so literally, New York, New York, they get a call from Moline and say, hey, we need, you know, uh, 100 boxes of clothes, whatever. They could ship it up the Hudson River over the Erie Canal to Lake Erie to the other Great Lakes down here to, uh, I don't know what this canal is called. It's called the Illinois Canal to the Illinois River to the Mississippi River, just like that. So, we were kind of feeling sorry for all these landlocked states yesterday, but thanks to all the beautiful rivers and lakes God put on, on in our country, these states can ship anywhere in the world, even way up here in, in North Dakota. They can ship things in the Missouri River to the Mississippi River and get out to the ocean. Uh, so that's why even though they're not on a large body of water, they're not on an ocean, they can still ship everywhere. Now, let's go to good old Arizona. This, my fine folks, is a map of Arizona and the surrounding areas with all the rivers in good old Arizona. Now, what do you know about these rivers in Arizona? Well, if you go up here to the Grand Canyon, you can see, yep, here's the Colorado River. And if any of you guys have ever been to the Grand Canyon, did any of you guys see big barges or ships in the bottom of the Grand Canyon? Nope. Here's the Gila River. And one of these is the Salt River. And I think even right here is the San Carlos River. No ships in those rivers, right? In fact, a lot of times those rivers are dry riverbeds. So, poor Arizona, poor Arizona, we're landlocked and we really don't have any access to the ocean. Because even if we go here in the Gila River, the Colorado River, to right here, it, we can't because those rivers cannot take those huge, massive ships like the Mississippi River can or the Missouri River can. So, Arizona... Any great shipping routes? Nope. Nope. We don't have any of those. But we're not going to feel sorry for Arizona after tomorrow because we'll figure out why Arizona has some advantages other states don't have. But here's your assignment. I, I wrote it out for you because you have another USA map. And before you start coloring stuff, please understand that's not, that's not the assignment. What I want you to do is look at pages R6 and R7 or R8 and R9, same map, they look a little different. Some, and I think R8 and R9 help with a little bit of the rivers, and R6 and R7 help with the cities. But, I want you to list 10 rivers. Now, some of them are hard to spell. The Mississippi River, the Missouri River, so on and so forth. But use those maps to help it out and to spell it. Label them, okay, I can actually write on there, Mississippi River, and then... Just so you understand why these big cities were built on those rivers is because, hey, they might have to take a little extra time going down the river, but they still have access to the ocean by traveling down the river to the ocean. So that's why those big cities look like they're in landlocked states, but because they're on big rivers and lakes, the states really aren't landlocked. So I also want you to list 10 of those cities that are on the rivers. Like, uh, you know, or the, or the lakes, like Chicago, Minneapolis, uh, St. Louis, different cities like that. Look on the Great Lakes. We got Cleveland. We got Detroit, uh, Gary, Indiana, all those big cities. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Go Brewers, right? But at any rate, uh, that's your assignment for today. This is what it looks like. I got the same exact directions listed on the worksheet. Uh, but... Look at those pages, R6 through R9, to help you out. Hey, guys, Lord's blessings to you today as you praise your Savior.